All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Fire Emblem Blazing Sword Let's Play. So now that we have actually promoted Elderwood into a Night Lord, or Great Lord if you will, it's time to actually go get the weapon that he needs to take down Nogal. Um, quick thing before we start, I've noticed in the comments section some people have been saying, you know, why hasn't my question been answered yet, or like, oh, it sucks that mine hasn't been answered yet. People, I will get through all these questions by the end of the Let's Play, don't worry. You just gotta realize there are a lot to get through, and I wanna make sure I answer everyone's in the fullest. So, sorry if I don't get around to everyone straight away, but I will get there, don't worry. I will answer your questions, even if like, you are one of the earlier people and I haven't got around to it yet, don't worry, I will answer them, you don't have to fret. So, speaking of which, um, actually, let me just quick get this quick, quick out of the way. In terms of the chapter itself, in story stuff, there's a lot going on. In terms of the level design, uh, honestly, you'll see me there. It's very eh. It feels a lot like Binding Blade in terms of like the, the panels and the stuff like that, and even the surroundings. But there's barely any enemies, and it's just kind of, it's pretty much, it's a filler chapter. That's all I can say. It's a filler chapter. Nagal wants Ninian to do stuff for him, but Ninian's like, oh, fuck this, I ain't doing it. <laughs> I was like, man, I should have fought harder about this. Anyway, um, let's start with the question, shall we? Because people really want me to get through this. Okay, so first one. If you were to make a completely new class in Fire Emblem, what would it be? Honestly, I'd like a class that focuses more on either affecting portions of the environment or buffing people, because I think we've got enough combat classes already. So I'd like a few more support classes, because we really don't have many of those. Like, the only ones I can really think of are, like, healers and dancers and in some cases like merchants or somewhat thieves, but not really. Whereas I'd like a class that focuses more on like buffing units, like give them uh, maybe defense boost, evasion boost, speed and attack boost, or something like that. Um, obviously limit how many you can do. Maybe you like, um, like in this game, you can only, you have a weapon which has a certain ammo for it. So you can only use it a certain amount of times, so you can't just spam it. Um, and I like a class that could affect the terrain, kind of like Dragon Veins, but much more minor. So maybe, let's say, you're going up against a couple of units, you use the class, and it's able to create some shrubbery around you, and you use that to your advantage, like, for maybe, like, two or three turns, then it goes away. And Ninian has just, hey, you've seen Ninian's true form. <laughs> this isn't even my final form. And the guy's like, you know what, fuck, I ain't gonna fight that. <laughs> and to be fair, it's probably a good idea. Um, next question is... Besides the Black Knight, who do you want for a grand hero battle? Um, pretty much just any Fire Emblem villain. Leon, or... We call him Zelgus has his own battle. Or Arvis, or Nagal, or Sephron, or, you know, just um, pretty much any Fire Emblem villain I'd be down with. Because they're the ones that really benefit from the grand hero battles. Or, you know, maybe... I'm trying to think of another Fire Emblem character that could really do with one. You know what would be interesting? If Hark got one. Because he kind of was an enemy in Path Radiance, only slightly. So, or maybe, I'm trying to think of another character that could do a Grand Hero battle. Perhaps, um... Maybe Oliver gets one, because he was an enemy, so maybe he could get one. So yeah, any um, any of those type of characters. And second question is, have you seen Akamega kill? If so, what was your least favorite death? Yes, I have seen Akamega kill, and my least favorite death was Leone's, only because it felt like a real cop-out. Like, I know in the manga, it's done much, much, much better. Here it felt like a real cop-out. She got she got taken down way too easy, and I was just like, no, that felt so half-assed. And such a disgrace to one of my favorite characters in the series. I really like Leone, so seeing that happen to her, I was just like, oh, I've left a, left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> uh, after that, describe a Fire Emblem villain that you would like to see in future Fire Emblem games, personality, design, story, all that jazz. Okay, so the Fire Emblem villain I've had in mind, and I kind of had this idea, um, I've kind of had this idea for the one, for like, if my, for one of my original con concepts, if you will, is it's um, a Fire Emblem villain who, from like childhood or birth, ha was trained like in the military to protect her king uh, kingdom. And I say, um, I want to, I think a female villain would be really cool. Because it will tie into this, um, because, um, while Fire Emblem, yeah, it's generally is very good with strong female characters. At the time, most, you know, princesses, if she's a royal or stuff like that, um, you know, um, let, right, yeah, the, the characters, like, of royalty. At the time, they would be, you know, princesses would not be seen in, like, the military and stuff. I mean, Fire Emblem does it just fine, you've got, like, Erika and Selica, but generally they're not seen as that. So... I reckon this would, uh, because of the stigma, stigma she has, she would train really, really, really hard to be, you know, worthy of the army and a strong soldier. But because of that, her mind has become so focused on military tactics that she's a bit 
di- like absent from human emotion. Not like like you know she's um she doesn't really understand people's feelings so much. And because of that, let's say it all depends on the story. But I like a villain who they tr- they try to protect their country and do what's right, but because of their mindset and the way they've been thing, they go overboard with it. Kind of like um it's kind of like if you took um like let's say um you know it's a feel how like um his like the way he thinks his mind works is how it should be regardless of what other people think and it's mainly because of his upbringing and how bad it was or with Zelgius or how that he's so military focused on the way he has to proceed with things even if it might not be right or wrong and sort of Camilla where she's really like in some of us like the way she actually is incredibly overly protective so if you took something like that I think it'd be kind of interesting and I'd like to like depending on how the story would play out let's say um no no the nations they've been at war for a while like there's two nations been at war for a while and the enemy nation like they get into a scuffle which causes like um quite a lot quite a lot of um the people in their village or like or in their towns or in their kingdoms be really badly like killed really badly hurt or killed and because of that she, this uh, character she overreacts and just goes full force on the people even though she really should take the time to negotiate but because of how she's been trained she just feels taking action is the best option it's not necessarily like you know and you can kind of get why she like it's for her she's just like she's kind of like because of the stigma she's been she was left with she became this way rather than just you know stuff like that because she loves her kingdom so much but because like you know they said a princess should be, like you know be some like shouldn't be in military affairs she felt like she could do like if all i did was sat down and do nothing that's a disservice so she became she struck she worked that hard to thingamajig in terms of how she'd look she kind of like if anyone see cook gears or um or um black lagoon like cornelia or balalaika where they have this like they're very um strong like quite tall powerful women but they had this slightly like um s- kind of s- like very regal almost like bala like a butt up and stuff but yeah they have this sexiness to them like you know they're strong and stuff but they're not but they look but you could definitely see like the the um they're well bred and stuff so that's what i would go with and same person asks what do you see in a good future effie villain well for me what makes it for a good effie villain is like when um a good example of this is like with Brakut where um they like because of how their mindsets work when they um when stuff doesn't go their way they don't know how to react which has caused them to go over the edge and stuff so i like i think fire emblem villains where they set out to achieve certain goals or think their way of going about things is right and when it doesn't go that way they overreact in the wrong way causing them to do worse things just because that's how they live their lives and having something not go that way it's a re- it's a relatable thing i think that i like and I think that'd be really, really effective. Like um, again with Baku, because he wasn't used to the commoners being like that. And seeing you know Arm beat him so many times, he just lost it because all his life he was like told, you know, this is how it's meant to be. So I think that would um, thing with Jake. And I think in terms of effect on the plot, uh, um, stuff like that, um, I like it if they were like. Um, like if they were them, they did it because it's more a case of they didn't do it to gain ultimate power. They actually did do it because they just feel that's the right way to do things, or their their goal in mind was like, um, if I do this now, it will help future and so on. It may seem horrible at the moment, but what I do will be for the greater good, so to speak. So that's why I think we make a good film one that's relatable and you know, it's kind of similar to what to what Bakut did. They have good intentions. But because things don't go the right way, they go the wrong way about it. Yeah, all the fire tiles popping up. <laughs> this is also the um, part where, if I remember, we promote both Priscilla and we promote, um, what's her face? Oh, what's his face? Legal. Though ironically, after this, we don't use Legal again, but I wanted to show off a fail contract. Also, it turns out you can get a second fail contract. If you go to in one of the, the second to last chapter, if you go up to the very top um, north east, yeah, it's a secret shop. You can buy one, but it costs like 50,000 gold. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> I don't need free assassins. Or do I? So anyway, there's Priscilla. You know, of all the units I've trained, Priscilla's been the most underwhelming in this playthrough, just because the level has been consistent, but not great. You know, Priscilla's good. It's just, you know, compared to like all the other units, she's just been kind of, eh, she's all right. And Legal's the same, though. I, one thing I did notice is Legal, like, if you notice when he uses the thing, he gets barely any boosts. Just watch. It's actually kind of weird. 
Like, in a second you'll see it. I mean, to me, like, you know, I'm, you know, it's cool to see the Assassin's Class promotion for the first time, but he gets like... Yeah, just four boosts, and even then, it's a total of eight in total. It's like, wow. But Lucius is kicking some serious ass, so that's wonderful. Okay, um... Okay, if Bard... Next question. If Bard were brought, were brought back and were able to fight like a dancer on Songstress, what do you think What do you think they'd wield? Um, he said person... This person said, personally, I see them using bows. I agree, they'd either use bows or daggers. I don't see them... Or maybe, like, maybe swords, but they can only go up to, like, what, C rank? Because they don't want you using really fancy stuff. So that's why I see them using, you know, sleight of hand weapons. I don't see them using axes or lances anytime soon. I don't even see them using magic. I usually see them like bows, bows and knives. Not sure I <laughs> Okay. Who is your favorite Fire Emblem character besides the Black Knight or Nephany? Well, see, Nephany was never my like never in my, my top five or anything. She was just a character I really liked. If it was favorite Fire Emblem character besides those two, well, besides Black Knight then, it would probably be either, well, from a more personal standpoint, Sumia, because I just love her. From a more, from kind of both a personal and just in terms of being a good character standpoint, it would be either Jill, Lynn, Lucina, or Lion. That's three L's, the three L's. Lynn, Lucina, and Lion. Leon, whatever you want to call it. And Jill, those ones are the ones, and Azora. Azora as well, I can't forget Azora. Those are the ones that really stand out to me as being really, really, really damn good characters. I mean, I like a lot, but if there was to narrow down, that, that's who I'd go for. <laughs> that garden got fucked up. Uh, next question. What are your opinions about the live-action Death Note film? I haven't seen it. I've heard it's awful, though some people say it's good. I heard it's generally awful. I am interested to see it because, well, I'm always the person who would like to give anything a chance, you know. It could be... If it's bad, then uh, it's terrible. I mean, Death Note was my first proper anime, so I do have some nostalgia towards that. But I'll see if what it is. If it sucks, it sucks. And, you know, whatever. If it's good, well, I'll be one of the few who thinks it's good. Are you going to make any Pokemon or Final Fantasy Let's Plays? Pokemon, definitely. I love Pokemon. I can't wait to doing Gen 1 and just abusing the fuck out of like psychic types and stuff like that. Final Fantasy, probably, but not until much later down the line because as of now, the only Final Fantasy, the only Final Fantasy games, I don't know why I said 13, that I really, um, I don't really play Final Fantasy that much. I have some experience with the games, but barely any. I own 15 though, and I do hope to really get more into that. So, you know, Final Fantasy, probably down the line a lot later, Pokemon Defo. What's your favorite magic class? Dark Mages. Why? Because they have the fancy tomes, they tend to have really good units, and once trained up, they hit so fucking hard. I love them. Dark Mages, they are wonderful. Alright. What other games on the Switch are you really hyped for, and any particular reason why? I'm hyped for Mario Odyssey, because that looks like one of the most fun you know, sandbox style Mario Sunshine, Super Mario 64, Mario games ever. And I love the Sunshine 64 formula. I mean, I love Galaxy and its linear type of level progression, but I've always been a bigger fan of the more sandbox mission-based progression. Uh, no More Heroes 3, because I love No More Heroes 1, I love No More Heroes 2, and Suda 51 are awesome. And seeing Travis come back, fuck yeah. I'm looking forward to Octopath Traveler because it looks to be a very unique game, really go going with more, a more innovative route, which I love. I love the style of it, I love the idea, and I think it'd just be a really great RPG. Doom, because this is fucking Doom, okay? It's my favorite shooting game. I love it to pieces. I don't care if it doesn't run as well. It's on the go. I, yo, if Doom had a dick, I would suck it dry. I know that sounds wrong, but Jesus Christ, that game is so good. And Metro Prime 4, because it's fucking Metro Prime 4. I don't need to say any more. <laughs> Okay. Next question from uh, Mr. Yu-Gi-Oh 5D, and I say that because he's been very active on this channel, this person, and he was waiting to get his questions answered. Well, here it is. Why is it you like Wendy but hate Mech? All right, let's start with why I like Wendy. I like Wendy because I think her character, while not too amazing, is just kind of cool. She has some nice supports of people. Um, I think, especially because I. And she was, I don't know if she was the first female knight, but definitely, because, again, because she just kind of bring up the whole stigma about her being a female knight is just uncommon. So I think that's cool, and you can see she's kind of like the young knight trying to train up and be really good, and she's very serious. And I think some of the supports, like, you know, where she does, like, with Lelina especially, I like to bring up, where she does, like, she appreciates the effort, but she understands, like, you know, I'm a knight, you're a lord, 
We can't really be this close. You have duties. So I like that she is a very humble and modest character, but you know, um, still quite strong. Not amazing, but still quite strong. And, uh, and even though she's a terrible unit, thing is, all the knights' binding blades suck. So it's like Wendy may be the worst, but Bors and Buff and Douglas—they're not worth using either. They're better, but still not worth using. Meg is a different story. First of all, I don't care for Meg's character. She's just like, she's just kind of, I know she hasn't got any real supports to go off, but she just does, just does nothing for me. She's not interesting. She has that, you know, she's just kind of quiet and she has that whole thing going on with Xerox, which I don't buy. And the fact that she tried to get in on Xerox in Elias' relationship, fuck off. You leave those two alone. They're perfect. Um, so, you know, she just didn't do anything for me and she wasn't interesting. I also think her design is really silly. And in terms of unit, she's not awful, but in because of Radiant Dawn's thing, you really can't afford to like, um, it's not, it's ill-advised to really train up units that aren't overall really great. I mean, with the Dawn Brigade part, I like to focus on the units that I re know are going to be great. So I like to focus on Jill, I like to focus on Xerox, I like to focus on Nolan, I like to focus on Soph. And I also do, even though they're not great, I do Aaron and I do Edward, because Edward usually turns out a really f fast Swordmaster who hits quite hard, and Aaron is a fucking tank, like, legit. So Meg, I really don't see the point, especially because she's not even that tanky for a knight. And also, when you consider there's like Torano or Toronio, I don't pronounce his name, and then later there's Brom, and there's Gatree, Meg, you really see how inferior Meg is. Wendy is inferior to like the other two, but not by that much, whereas, you know, comparing Meg to Gatree, this is no fucking competition. Uh, it's just like, no, don't, don't, don't bother. So that's why. Um, he also asks, If you married someone other than Camilla, Kagero, and Azora in Fates, who would it be? So we're going Conquest, Revelations, Birthright, Pathway. Conquest, it's down to either Charlotte or Effie. Because Charlotte, I do kind of like, um, I like them both as characters. Charlotte, I like a little bit more. And she's also, I find her more attractive. But at the same time, her and Xander are such a beautiful couple, I don't want to split them apart. So it's like, you know what? You guys be with each other. I will leave you two alone. But I do like Effie at the same time as well. You know, she ranked third and I really do like her. So it's out of those two. Um, uh, for Birthright, it would probably be a Boro just because, again, while Birthright's cast is overall kind of bland, a Boro is one of the few characters I felt had quite a strong personality. Not perfect, but quite strong. I liked what, what she was going with. And she seemed kind of just like, I liked her fashion sense and she seemed kind of cheery. You know, when she wasn't angry about the Norian, she just seemed like a very cheery person. And she wasn't one of those people who was like, oh, I just do this because it's my duty. That's one of the things I like Kagero. She actually had many hobbies outside of being a ninja. I was like, oh, thank God, a character who actually has a life. <laughs> um, as for Revelations, that's easy, Felicia. I love Felicia. I think she's adorable. A lot of her, like, her main arc and motives really resonate with me about where she's not the best at what she does, but she does it. She just does it so much because she loves it. Why do you think I do YouTube? Um, so, yeah. Um... And also, people say, why do you like her? One of the things I get, which I have to really question, is people say, why do you like Felicia so much? She's a Sumia 2.0. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> you, I just can't put my finger on it. So yeah, uh, it would be Felicia. I love Felicia. Um, who are your top 10 plays in sword units? Um, well, I'm going to make a video about that once this Let's Play is done, or sometime along the lines. But off the top of my head, Hector... Um, Hector Lynn, Elwood, Lucius Raven, Oswin, Matthew, Jafar, Nino, and probably Sane. Off the top of my head. I mean, when I come to the um, final thing, it will probably be different. Maybe. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Who would you say loves? Who would you say loves who more? You with Sumio or me with Mia? Well, for one thing, you never do stop talking about Mia. I can tell you absolutely love her. But I heard like the way you do talk about it, it's mainly just from what I've heard, from what I get from you. I mean, I, I, you know, this is just what I get from your comments. It's mainly just you just really like using her in terms of like just playing the games, maybe as a unit. I mean, I don't know how you feel in regards towards her character and stuff like that. So I don't know because with Sumia, while I don't talk about her nearly as much as you talk about Mia, I at the same time, S Sumia, actually you're going to find this out in the next video for the main channel, which I'm not going to say, but you'll find out. Sumia has a really, really, oh yeah, you can't be murdered so you've got to be careful what you drop and stuff. Um, Sumia has a massive, massive personal connection with me and it's actually like, uh, it's something that really, you know, 
she played a big part. She actually really did play a big part in my life, and I'm not going to explain why here. If you, when you see the next video, it will see there, but she... Sumia means more to me than just a character in Fire Emblem. So, I'm going to go with me and Sumia, but I don't know how you feel towards Mia. Because I, all I get is you just really like her as a unit. Um, still same person. Who would you put... How, how would you put the, the non-royal Laguz and Radiant Dawn order from least favourite to favourite? Um, favourite is like Ranulf, Yuki and Janeth. Um, Leith and Mordecai. And then there's like Lyra and what's his face? The other dude. They're my least favorite. I'll also put like um like above Leith and Mordecai or Lethe or Le I can't remember what man's name. You put Volug there, and those are the non-royal the goose. Not counting the herons as well. Herons don't count. So that's what I put them. Oh yeah, this is Roland. Um, yeah, you know, one of the characters who um was part of the scouring. I actually brought up if they did do a game like this that he should be the main character, but people did say Harmutsha because he gets the Binding Blade, which I agree with, but I would have loved to play a game with all these characters, like a young Athos, Roland, Harmut, and all the eight legs. I would have loved that. I hope they do make it. I swear to God, though, if they announce it as Fireman Thing, it's, again, like I said, they, I, I might as well be working for Nintendo. Um, next is... Uh, Sumia or Mei? <laughs> Sumia? I love Mei. Mei is Bay, but Sumia is ultimate waifu. I love Sumia. <laughs> so, Sumia Mei, who do I prefer? Sumia. What is your favorite tome? Nosferatu. Love that tome. Just because, you know, just give me the HP. You can't get past me. I will fuck you all up. Who are you going to main in Warriors? More than likely, I'm going to main Lin because Lin looks cool. The two others I plan to main is Xander and Camilla, not just because I like them. But because based on their gameplay styles, they look really cool. Like Xander, really like how he's going with you and Camilla looks fucking awesome. Like Jesus Christ, I'm like, oh my god. When the sexiest thing about you is not your tits, you've done something right, Camilla. You have done something so right. Um, also, do I have a question for him? Yes, I do have a question for you. Have you ever played through either Path of Radiance or Radiant Dawn at all without ever using like maining Mia I mean you've got to use her in Radiant Dawn because she's part of the thing have you ever done it where you didn't main Mia or like she wasn't one you brought to the end game I'd love to know that probably gonna be no uh, but so next question what third tier classes would you like to see in the future I, uh, I've pretty much answered this number but pretty much third tier classes is based on you know the new guys uh, third tier Malik Knights third tier Ninjas third tier Butlers third tier Mechanists third tier you know what should you call it? Third tier Dark Knights, all that stuff. So the new classes get third tier units. Though I'd really like to see Malik Knights and Dark Knights get them, because I'd like to see how much more how much more bust how you can make them. Um What is your favorite spell in the series? Uh, I answered that before, it was um Nosferatu. But aside from that, I really do like um Salika's Gale, because it's basically a brave tome. What's your favorite overclass? Uh, if you're talking about, oh shit, dragon? <laughs> no, my favorite overclass is not dragon, but yeah, this is a giant fucking green dragon. They're actually ice dragons, so careful. <laughs> I didn't get the Echoes DLC, so yet, because I, I didn't feel like it, probably on the second playthrough I will, so I can't really save my overclass. But Edward whips out the Durant Owl and, and wipes that beast out. Man, even though, no, well, it's bright, it's huge. <laughs> One shot and it's gone. But to be fair, the sword kind of controlled him rather than him controlling the sword. Yeah, that was quite the heated battle, but something tells me this isn't going to go right. Something feels off. Also, what would you like to see from Lock Horizon Season 3? Well, I haven't completed Season 2 yet, so I can't say. I heard Season 2 ends on a bad note, but I'll see for myself, and then maybe I'll get back to this question once I actually finish it. After you get your Switch, what which games will you get? Besides FU Warriors. Um, all the ones I mentioned previously that are either out or coming out, plus Splatoon 2, because I missed out on Splatoon 1 and it did look like a lot of fun, so I feel this is a perfect time to jump in, especially since this is early in the Switch's life. And maybe ARMS, because I have heard it is a lot of fun, but ARMS isn't like a day one thing for me. So if I feel curious or I see it cheap, I'll go for that. And the girl's here. What the hell do you want? <laughs> and oh, this is probably the bit where you see just how... Um, what do you call it? Just how... Evil he can be, but for reasons you wouldn't expect. Okay, so who are your favorite able archetype characters? Favorite able archetype? Um, Sane because I absolutely love him. He's just awesome. Um, that's what I really like in terms of. Carla thought was cool. Oscar's very nice, but he didn't stand out to me too much. 
Kaze is technically an able archetype, and I fucking love Kaze. I just, I thought he was, he was such a sweetheart. Um, Lance I thought was cool. Aside from that though, can't really say for anyone else. I mean, Sasal's cool as well, but not amazing. What's your opinion on Sonic Colors? It's my favorite 3D Sonic game. I love colors. I love the level design. I love the controls. I love the direction the series went. It is quite easy, but I just love how varied the areas are. Just like the atmosphere it's got going for it, the soundtrack. Just how much fun it is. Sonic Colors is just simple, fun, and it's great stuff. I think it's really, really good. And who from Echoes do you want in Warriors? Um, I would like either... Well, obviously, Alm, Bakut would be cool. I'd love to see Matilda, May, and also either one of Alm's friends, probably like Grey or maybe um, Cliff, and definitely Saber. So now uh, the girl's unveiling the truth to us, and uh, oh, Ella was not not going to take this well. Uh, keep going. Um, thoughts on Nephany, Alincia, and Oscar's. Oscar's art and voice acted li voice lines. Uh, I actually haven't heard, I've heard a few of their voice lines and they sound just fine. You know, voice acting in Heroes is something I really don't pay attention to because it's such a minor thing. They just have small quips and stuff. I really don't, like, I don't really have a problem with anyone and no one in particular. I'm like, oh God, they're amazing. I'm just like, yeah, they're cool. Um, and what's, this is a, what was it, thing? Um, the art is cool though, I do like the art. Nalincia looks adorable, and I love Nephany, she looks very, very grandiose. And yeah, Nagal's just told her, yeah, that, that dragon we just killed, that um, giant monster, yeah, that was Ninian. You just, um, you just killed the woman she loved. Also interesting, if you do get a support um, with Ella with Ninian, it does specifically say the dialogue does change to the girl, the woman you, or the girl you loved, which I think is a very nice attention to T-cells. Oh boy, this moment, Jesus, man, this is, uh, this is heavy stuff, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, da, 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 da. Which class build would you like to see in future Fire Emblem Lords? Honestly, I'd like them to do what they did with Ephraim and go for like a, um, a Lancer build, or maybe an Archer build I think would be interesting, or maybe a Mage build, they haven't done that. This is why the, this is one of the things that makes Nagal so evil. He's rubbing in the face that Nagal actually didn't do anything. This is all Elowood's fault, and he's just rubbing it in his fucking face. Like, yeah, you did this. You killed her. Sucks to be you. And he is loving every second of it. And yeah, Ninian is not feeling well, to put it lightly. Get out your handkerchiefs, people. In the meantime, let me answer more questions. Will you be let's play? Will you be let's playing Mario Party? If so, which games? And will multiplayer be part of the live recording or post commentary with a few people? Mario Party, yes, definitely do. Which one? Most likely four and five, since that's the ones um, my um, Olivia and I and my brother Isaac grew up on. So if we ever did those, would be that. But I'm opt I'm open to many Mario Parties, may except maybe nine and ten because they just don't interest me. <laughs> and Mario Party one just to because how bullshit it is. And if it's live or post, live. It cannot do post. Why? Because we need the live reactions to when somebody gets fucked over and I end up strangling someone and then I get a beer brothel broken over my face because I want to do drunk Mario parties. Then Olivia pins me to the floor and then we start rowing and rowing. And in the end, Luigi wins by doing absolutely fucking nothing. So, yeah. Oh, boy. This is one of the... God. This is one of the saddest, most impactful and best moments not only in this game but in Fire Emblem like fuck I think this is what makes Fire Emblem so effective especially here where you see how actions do have consequences like you know she's dead in most fairy tales you know maybe she'd be hurt no no she's fucking dead and you know the girl's just like looking over him like yeah you fucking killed that bitch sucks to be you I think that's what makes Nagal so evil, because he didn't do this. He's just laughing in Elliot's face about how thing we're doing. And Avos is like, fuck you. <laughs> Takes my 13 damage. And you're, yeah, 75 HP. And Jesus Christ, your sprite looks so much more intimidating than it has a right to be. Nagal's sprite is fucking terrifying, just like compared to most people. That's like the ultimate druid sprite. Jesus Christ. Um. Next question. Have you ever played a Kingdom Hearts game? 
yeah, I played Kingdom Hearts 2 for a bit. I enjoyed it. I got to like Mulan and Beauty and the Beast. And then I stopped just because I, rent I borrowed it from a friend. It wasn't permanent. I will do, you know, Kingdom Hearts does look cool. If Johnny's views or anything, it does look like a series I might enjoy. So I'll probably get back into it. Olivia's played Kingdom Hearts 1 and she enjoyed it. So Kingdom Hearts, yeah, probably give it a go. Um, okay. Any ideas for what you watch for the full season of anime? Okay, so I did look this up. Some of them are Japanese ma names that I'll have to go off just because, you know, I didn't find the English ones. So the ones I'm going for, Food Wars Season 3, because I love Food Wars. I think it's pronounced, I'm going to put pictures on screen and text. Days, Array, Array, or something like that. March comes in like a Lion Season 2, because good lord, that is one of the most beautiful series I've ever seen. <laughs> and the thing went black for a second. Yeah, it's just the Wii U. Inuyashika. In Yua Yashika, whatever it's called. Again, sorry for pronunciation. I'm just kind of trying to read these quickly. Just because... Shouju Shumatsu Ri... Ro... 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 Ro Yuku? You know, this is just based on um, quick things I've seen. Um, vanishing Line. Code Realize. And yeah, that's all I've got for now. And oh boy, this moment right here. Good lord. Like, this image you're going to see, it's one of the most... No, oh, this is one of the... Just just look. Ellawood is grieving over Ninian. Nils is losing his mind. Lynn is bawling her eyes out. And Hector, he's looking at Nils like, yeah, I like the way you cry. <laughs> Sorry for mood whiplash. And also, just to finish off quickly, um, is the 25,000 special coming soon? Not doing 25,000 special. I already, um, I'm working on the Twitter one that I did the 1,000 special. And the next one is going to be 3,000 subs, which is the face reveal. And any chance we will get remix of some of your lists soon. That's going to happen after the face reveal because then I can incorporate live action segments into the videos. And then it would really show how much they've evolved since then. Because I know that my style has become, my quality has become much better. But I think with live action stuff, we could add on to that and you can really see the difference between then and now. So anyway, thank you all very much for joining me for this part. We I still plan to get through the rest of the questions, and oh boy, that was quite heavy in terms of the emotion. So next time we meet, we're going to regroup back at Ostia and try to get over what just happened, but also learn the origins of Athos and Nagal. Bang. But until then, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.